how to sew the market bag. Use charm squares and some plain or print fabric to piece this oh so useful market bag. Cutting out. You need to start by cutting out your charm squares or you can use five by five inch squares of an other fabric. If you follow the instructions, it will tell you how many squares you need to cut out for the bag front outer and the bag back outer. You can see the ones I've cut here. You'll also need to cut out some squares to use for the pocket one and pocket two. These pockets are optional, but I've included these in case you want to add them. And you'll need some squares for the straps. You'll also need to cut out some plain fabric. This is used for the sashing that goes around the charm squares on the bag front and the bag back. So you've got vertical sashing, horizontal sashing and the base front and back. Remember all the measurements for this are listed in the instructions. And then finally, cut out some lining fabric. This is used to line the bag, the front of the bag, the back of the bag and the pockets as well as the straps. Choose a lining that coordinates with your charm squares or just choose something really bright and cheerful as a contrast depending on how you want your finished bag to look. Put all the pieces to one side and label them or remember which piece is which when you're constructing the bag. Making the bag front outer and the back outer. Take the nine charm squares that you cut for the bag front outer and lay them right side up in three rows so that you've got three squares in each row. Now rearrange them until you're happy with their placement. You might want to just place them randomly or if you've got some of the same squares, place them so they're not touching. Entirely up to you, but arrange them till you're happy with them. Now to join the, rows to the squares together in each row, you need to use the vertical sashing strips. So to start off with, with row one, that's the row that's at the top. I'll just move these others out of the way so that you can see. So with row one that's at the top, place a vertical sashing strip to the left of each of the squares. So you're using three strips in total and you sew them to the left hand side of each of the charm squares. So place them right sides facing like this and then sew them together. Once you've done that, you can then join them together by sewing the other side of the sashing strip to the square that's next to it to make one complete row. And this is what it will look like when it's done. You can press the seams over to one side. You can either press them towards the sashing or to the other side. It's up to you. I've just shown you both ways, but make sure you press them the same way each time. Make row two and row three in exactly the same way with the vertical sashing strips. Now to join the rows together, they are joined with a horizontal sashing strip. So sew one beneath row one, and then sew that to the top of row two, and then sew one beneath row two, and sew that to the top of row three. When you sew them together, place them right sides facing, like this, and turn them over so that you stitch from the side with all the seams. This helps to keep the seams pressed over to the side that you've chosen. Now you've joined all the rows together and you can see with mine I press the seams towards the sashing. Now take another horizontal sashing strip and sew that to the top of row one. This just frames the whole piece. So you can now see I've joined all the rows together with vertical and horizontal sashing strips between them. Now take the bag base front and we need to cut out the corners of this so you can make box corners. So draw and cut out a two inch square from the bottom left corner. I'm using my ruler for this, but you could just use a tape measure. Just make sure that you draw and then cut out a two by two inch square from the bottom corners. So from the bottom left and now I'm drawing the bottom right. Once you've drawn the square in place, you can then cut it out. So once you've cut out the squares from the bottom of the base front, you can now sew that to the bottom of row three. So turn it over, place it right sides facing, making sure those cut out corners are on the bottom edge. 
and then pin it together with the seamed side uppermost. So these are right sides together and I've made sure that the seams, so I'm stitching from the bottom row three and that will keep those seams pressed over to one side. So pin it together all the way along, making sure the raw edges along the bottom edge and the side edges match up and then sew it together. Once that's done, you have finished the bag front outer with all the sashing strips and the base and you can see I've pressed all the seams over to one side. Make the bag back in exactly the same way using the charm squares you put aside for the back bag and the remainder of the vertical and horizontal sashing strips remembering to cut out the two inch squares from the bottom corners. And there's the front and back finished. Assembling the bag outer. If you want to add a little padding and structure to your bag, you need to do that now. If not, just skip to the next stage. I've decided to use some H640, which is a fusible wadding to add to my bag, but you could use Bosal in our form, which is a foam, and that will give it a basket-like structure. If you are going to use foam or wadding, then place the assembled bag front outer and bag back outer on top of it and press into place if using fusible or tack if not. Then you can add any other quilting stitches if you want. I just quilted an eighth of an inch inside all of the sashing strips just to make them stand out a bit. And then trim the foam or the wadding to the same size as the bag front outer and the bag back outer. So you've I've completed these. If you don't want to do that, then you just need to join them together. So place the bag front outer and the bag back outer right sides facing. Match up the raw edges on the left hand side. To make it neater, make sure that the horizontal sashing strips match up. If you just roll the front piece back, you can make sure they match up. Make sure they're sitting right on top of each other. And then I would pop a pin in where those seams are just to make sure they all match. They're all exactly the same size, so they should match, but this will just give you an extra neater finish if you pin them together at where the sashing strips are, and then they will match up exactly. So once you've pinned it together down the sides, you can now pin it together across the bottom. You only need to pin and sew across the bottom of the base outer, not around the cutout corners as they will be used later. So match up the raw edges at both sides and then in the centre and pop a pin in place there. And now pin them together up the left hand side, again matching up the seams of the horizontal sashing strips. and pop a pin in where the seams meet up. Now sew the front to the back all the way around, down the side, not around the cutout corner, across the bottom, not around that, and then up the other side. Once that's done, it will be joined together and it will look like that. So the top edge is open and the corners are open. Now take one of the corners, so take the side seam and the base seam and place them right sides facing. Make sure that these seams match up and the easiest way to do that is push a pin through the seam on the base and then pull it apart and push it through the seam on the side. Pull the pin all the way through so that you're pulling the seams together and then place a horizontal pin so it's fully joined and then you can take out that extra pin. Now open up the corner and place it flat. Just make sure that you haven't got any creased or pleated bits by just running your fingers or a small ruler inside to even it out and then pin across the corner. so that you've got angled side edges, and then you'll sew across this corner. First, I'm going to pin the other one, so match the other side seam to the other end of the base seam. Open out the seam allowances. If you've got wadding or foam, you probably need to do this with your fingers. And then push a pin through the seam of the side 
and into the seam of the base. Pull the pin all the way through and that anchors the seams together and then pop another pin in and remove that holding pin. Again, in the same way, lay the corner out flat. Just pop your fingers inside or a ruler or something to just make sure that there are no pleats or creases and pin together across the corner. Now you can sew across this corner and there you go, the two box corners are complete. If you now turn the bag out to right sides out, push out those corners by putting your fingers inside and just pushing out the corners so that they lay right on the edges. And then to get a neater finish, it's a really good idea to press it at this stage before you put any of the lining in. So take one corner and pinch it and go across to the other corner and press that. And that will give you a nice neat base and then press the sides as well. And there's your bag outer is now finished. Making the pockets. The bag has two pockets which are sewn to the lining. They're made in the same way. Take the four charm squares you cut for the pocket one and place them in two rows with two charm squares in each row in your chosen order. Just rearrange them. Now pin the two squares in row one right sides facing and then pin the two squares in row two right sides facing. Just like this. You can see which edges need to be joined together because you've laid them right sides up. Make sure the raw edges are matching and pin them together. Now sew these two pairs down the sides. Once that's done, open them up and press the seams open. Now place them back into position and sew the bottom of the row one to the top of row two. Make sure you match that central seam that's joining them just to, for a neater finish. So pin it together with the central seam matching first and then pin at either end. And then sew the top row to the bottom row across the pinned edge. Once that's done, press the seam open. Now take the lining fabric, so that's the pocket one lining, and place it right sides facing with the joined outer. Turn it over so that you've got the joined charm squares on top and this is because you want to make sure that those seams stay pressed open. So if you sew from this side, you can make sure as you're stitching over them, they stay pressed open. So pin them together along the top edge. And then pin them together down the right hand side edge. And then along the left hand side edge, make sure you match the raw edges on the top and sides by pinning at one end and then pop a pin in the centre. Now along the bottom edge you need to leave a three inch turning gap in the centre. So because that seam's in the centre, that's quite easy to work out. If you measure and mark one and a half inches either side of that centre seam, then that will be a three inch gap left in the centre. Place vertical pins at this point. It will help you to remember to stop and start stitching so you don't stitch the turning gap. So starting at one pin, stitch all the way round and finish at the other pin. Once that's done, I've pressed all the seams over to one side. It just makes it easier to turn out later and you'll get a neater finish. And there's the turning gap that's left. Now trim those corners by just opening them up a little bit. It just reduces the bulk in the corners and you'll get a crisper finish because you'll get neater corners. So just trim those on off, but make sure that you don't cut through the actual stitches, but just a little bit away from them. Once you've trimmed off all the corners, open up the turning gap and turn the whole pocket right sides out. Now push out all the corners with your fingers so they lay right on the edges. And then to get them really nice and pointed, use a blunt tool. I'm using the stick for my turning tool here, but make sure it's not something sharp because you don't want to pierce the fabric. You're just pushing out the corners to get neat edges. And then give it a press 
all the way round so that the seam lays right on the edge. Once that's done, top stitch across the top edge to neaten and decorate. You can see here, I actually worked two rows of top stitching. It holds the line in place and decorates it. Now take the lining front and lay it right sides up so that the short edge is across the top and bottom and long edge down the side. Now fold it in half lengthways just to mark the centre crease. This is for positioning the pocket. So that centre crease is going down the long edge. Now the pocket needs to lay centrally on top of the lining but it needs to be positioned four inches down from the top. So if you measure four inches down from the top along that crease centre edge and mark that with a pin. Now take the top of the pocket and place that at that pin mark and then make sure the bottom of the pocket so you can use that centre seam as a guide. So make sure that the centre seam of the pocket lies on the crease and the centre seam of the bottom pocket lies on the crease and pin them into place. Once you've pinned it at the top and the bottom, then you can pin it together down the sides. Just smooth it out as you go to make sure that the pocket stays laying nice and flat on top of the bag front lining. Now sew the pocket in place, down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. Now your pocket's attached. If you want to make it extra secure, add a press or snap fastener to the inside of the pocket and the lining so they meet up. Then make and attach pocket two to the bag back lining in exactly the same way. These are optional, but it's nice to have pockets inside your bag. Assembling the bag lining. Take the front lining that you've made and attach the pocket to and cut a two by two inch square out of the bottom corner. This is exactly the same as you did with the back out bag outer and it's used for boxing the corners. If you haven't added the pockets, it doesn't matter. You can just make the lining in the same way by cutting out the two by two inch square out of the bottom corner. Remember that the lining bottom and top edge are the shorter edges and the side edges are the longer edges. So once you've marked the two by two inch square, cut it out. And then repeat that to cut out the two by two inch squares from the bottom corners of the bag back lining in exactly the same way. Now to join the lining pieces together, place them right sides facing. And these are sewn together in the same way as the bag outer, except you haven't got any seams to match up. So pin them together down one side, making sure you match up the side and top raw edges. Pop a pin in one end and then pop a pin in at the other end and then pin together along the centre between the two pins. Just give it a little pull, lay it out flat and smooth it so that the raw edges are matching and then you can put the pins in place. Now pin it together up the other side. Again, remember, we won't be sewing round or pinning the cutout corners because they're used to box them in a moment. So pin it together at either end, smooth it out, make sure the raw edges are matching and pin between the pin, the end pins. Now for the bottom we need to leave a turning gap so we can turn the bag right sides out. So to start off with, just to make sure that the base edge is laying together, pin at either side. Now fold it in half to find the centre crease and then the turning gap is six inches. So measure and mark three inches either side of this turning crease. If you've added pockets you may already have this because you creased those lining pieces in half to, for pocket placement. So I'm going to measure and mark and then again put vertical pins in so you remember to leave that turning gap unstitched. So now sew it together down the side from one side of the turning gap up to the other 
the other side of the turning gap to the side, not round the cutout corners and down the other side. And now your lining is all joined together. If you press the seams open at this stage, it helps them to lay on the edges later. And you can see I've pressed the edges of the turning gap over to one side as well. Now, box the corners in exactly the same way as you did with the outer. So make sure that the seam of one side and the base match up and pin it together. It's a bit easier if you haven't used the wadding with this because it's easier to box the corner. So lay it out flat, make sure there aren't any creases or tucked in the inside and pin it together across that box corner. And then sew across it. Once you've done that, box the other corner in exactly the same way. As you can see here, I've sewn the side of the base seams. Then you can turn your lining right sides out. And you'll see it's got nice big box corners that match the outer and then there's a gap left in the lining for turning out in a moment. Making the straps. Take the seven charm squares you chose for the straps and we now need to cut them all in half. So take one of the charm squares and cut it in half vertically down the center so that it measures two and a half inches wide and five inches tall. You can see here with this I've used charm squares that have got prints on them but you could use plain ones or you could use all the same colour it's entirely up to you it's just a nice way to have a patchwork handle so cut all of them in half exactly down the centre and then put them into separate piles so put one in each pile so now you've got 14 squares one for each strap one pile of seven for one strap one pile of seven for the other so take one pile Sort them out first so that they're in the order you want them to be or use them randomly and then join them all together at the short end so they make one long strip. So pin them together at the short ends. If they've got a print direction, make sure the print direction is facing the same way. If they haven't, it doesn't matter. Pin them together at all the short ends. So you're just joining seven together for one strap. Once that's done, you've pinned them, sew them all together. And here's one of my strap outers with seven of the half charm squares all joined together and then press the seams open. Then repeat that to join the other seven half charm squares together to make the other strap outer. Now take the strap lining pieces. So take one strap lining and one strap outer and place them right sides facing. If you place the strap outer on top, then when you sew them together, you can be sure that those seams stay pressed open because you'll be sewing over them. Make sure all the raw edges are matching up and pin them together at one end and pin them together at the other end. If you don't want a patchwork strap, you could always use the measurements for the strap lining to just cut one piece from a fabric of your choice and then you'll just have a single outer rather than a patchwork one. It is entirely up to you. So pin them together all the way along, down both long sides, and then sew together down both long sides only. Once that's done, you need to turn it right sides out. So I've pressed the seam open, because it makes it easier to get the seams to lay on the edge if you press the seams open. And then I've worked a tacking stitch along one short end, because I'm going to use my turning tube for turning the strap right sides out, and it's easy if you've tacked. Use the blunt end of the stick and push the end through the tube. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to carefully turn the whole strap right sides out. So once it's all right sides out, just remove the stick, then lay it flat. You have to take out the tacking stitches on that end, but lay it flat so that the Seams down both long edges, lay right on the edges, just like I've done here. So you can see it's all nice and flat. And then top stitch down both long edges of the strap. This just neatens and decorates it, but also holds the lining to the inside. So this is one strap finished with its outer and its lining. And then make the other strap in exactly the same way. Assembling the bag. 
Take the bag outer and arrange it so that one of the side seams, I'm going to start with the left side seam, is just laying in a bit from the side. Now take your tape measure and measure two and a half inches inwards, so to the right hand side of that left side seam at the top and mark that with a pin and then measure two and a half inches a little bit further down, a couple of inches further down and mark that with a pin. Now take one of your straps and make sure it's facing the way you, the way you want it to by just laying it on top. Then place it right sides down on top. The short end needs to be extending half an inch beyond the top of the bag. This just makes it extra secure and stops it getting pulled out when you're using it. And the left hand side needs to be level with those two and a half inch pins. So pin it together at the top and then a little bit further down. Make sure that you only pin through one side of the bag. Now I pull the bag round a bit so that the right hand side seam is a little bit in from the right hand edge just so that you can measure it. You can check where that is by having a look on the inside. And again, take your tape measure and measure two and a half inches inwards from that side seam and mark with a pin at the top. And then measure two and a half inches inwards a little bit further down and mark that with a pin. Now take your strap, making sure it's not twisted by running it through your fingers. Place the right hand edge of it by those pins, making sure it's extending a half an inch above the top of the bag. Pin the top of the strap into place and then pin it a little bit further down. Again, make sure that you've only pinned through one side of the bag, moving the pins if you've managed to go through both sides like I did. Now tack it into place across the top and then a little bit further down using the longest stitch on your machine so the because the bottom set you'll remove later. So you can see I've tacked one strap into place, then repeat that to measure, mark, pin and tack the other strap to the other side of the bag. Now take the bag lining that you made earlier and turn it wrong sides out. Push out the corners so that it's completely wrong sides out. Then take the bag outer, keeping it right sides out. If you fold it in half like this, then you can push it inside the lining and the outer and the lining are now right sides facing. Now find the side, one of the side seams on the outer and one of the side seams on the lining. Match up those side seams so that they lay exactly on top of each other. Make sure the seam allowances are open and flat and then pin it together. And then turn it round and pin it on the other side. The bag has a front outer and a back outer and a front lining and a back lining. They are identical, so it doesn't really matter that you get them front to front and back to back unless you've chosen or placed the pockets because you want one in one place. But otherwise, because they're identical, it doesn't really matter. Now, pin those side seams together, making sure the seam allowances are open and flat. And give it a shake to make sure that the lining is still inside the bag and the straps are facing downwards because you don't want them to have moved upwards and get caught in this seam. Now pin the lining to the outer all the way round and you'll see that the ends of the straps will be poking up above this edge by half an inch because that's how you placed them earlier. Make sure that you match up the raw edges of the lining with the raw edges of the outer. The outer and the lining are exactly the same size so they will fit together nicely. So just pin it together all round one side and then pin it together around the other side. Again, do double check that the straps are facing downwards because sometimes during this process, if they move upwards, you don't want them getting caught in this seam. And again, matching the raw edges, pin the lining and the outer together. Once that's done, sew it together all the way around the top. Now I've sewn it together, as you can see here. Pull the outer outside the lining so that both of them are laying flat and the seam is in the middle. And then press this seam open and flat as it will help it to keep it laying on the edge when you turn it right sides out later. So give it a press all the way around so that it's nice and open and flat and you're ready for the next stage. Tip. This is an optional step, 
which you can do at this stage to hold the bag lining inside the outer. So take one of the outer corners and follow its seam along with your finger until you reach the lining corner that's in a straight line from it. Bring the lining corner to the outer corner and place them together so that they're, the centre seams are matching. Make sure you open out the corners so that the corners are both laying flat and on top of each other and the centre seams are matching. And then pin them together. And then you need to sew them together inside the seam allowance. So just eighth of an inch from the edge, but not on the seam allowance, but just in. Now take the other outer corner and again, follow it along with your finger until you find the lining corner. Because you've sewn the other corner in, it will be a bit pulled under. But if you just undo it, you can find it. So just make sure that it's the corner that's in a straight line. Bring them together so that the seams lay on top of each other match the centre seams and the corners, pin them together and then sew them together within the seam allowance. This holds the lining right inside the outer so that it won't come out, gives your bag a better shape as well. Once you've sewn both of them, it will look like this, a bit like in a circle, <clears throat> like it's not really going to work but it will. You can see if you turn it over, there's the outer side and there's the lining side and there's the turning gap ready to use. Finishing off. Take your bag and turn it right sides out through the turning gap. If you've boxed the corners and joined them together using my tip, then you'll see it looks like this. If you haven't, it's exactly the same. Just turn it right sides out through the turning gap. If you push it through, gradually working for all the way around from one side then to the other side, it will go through. Once you've got it all the way through, before you turn it completely right sides out, you need to sew up the gap in the lining. So because you press the ends, edges of the turning gap under when you made the lining, this will be a bit easier. It might be a little bit creased now because of turning it right sides out, but you could give these edges are pressed, make sure they're still turned under. It's a little bit easier to pin and sew it together if you give them an extra press at this stage. So just turn those folded under edges of the turning gap to the inside. And pin them together all the way along. Now to close the turning gap, you can either top stitch across it by machine or you can slip stitch it by hand just to hold that closed. So you can see here, I top stitched mine by machine, cut off the thread ends. Now I'm ready to push the lining inside the bag. Just put your hands and just push out those corners, but because you pressed them when you made the outer, that will be a bit easier. And you can see that the lining is held neatly inside because of me sewing the outer to the lining corners. If you haven't done this, don't worry, just push, push the lining inside. Now we're going to top stitch across the top of the bag, but the handles need to be facing upwards for, for this. So the first thing you need to do is just remove that second row of tacking stitches that you put in earlier to keep the strap straight. So using a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors, take out the tacking stitches and remove all the loose pieces of thread so that the handles are now facing upwards. It's worth tacking them down like this when you're assembling because it means that your handles will always be standing up straight otherwise sometimes they can go slightly skewy and then you have wonky handles. So now all the tacking stitches are removed Roll that top seam between your fingers so that the seam lays right on the edge. Because you pressed that seam open earlier, that makes this a lot easier to do. So roll it between your fingers and it's also worth taking it to the ironing board and giving it a little press too. Now top stitch all the way around the top edge. I top stitch mine an eighth an inch from the top just because then it mirrored the quilting stitches which I'd placed an eighth an inch inwards from all of the strips. And your bag is now finished. If you have a look inside, you can see it's got the two pockets. You can see that the lining corners are held ne neatly inside because of this 
the extra tip that I did. So your market bag is now ready to take out and fill with your shopping. <laughs>